Hey, well, good morning. good morning. Does that make you want to get your exercise on just a little bit, right? Push out a few just that right there. Uh, man, we're really excited, launching into a new series today called Give My Best. Let's say that together. Give My Best. Yeah, really good. And so we have been on this journey since January, just on this idea that we believe God's given us a new day, new vision, new values. We're having new influence, new impact. I hope you can sense it um, the way that we can. And so we believe that uh, God's given us three values that we've kind of locked in on. We finished up last week talking about fight for relationship, and we talked about that for three weeks, one of our primary core values. And just this idea that people aren't transactions, that they're treasures. You know, that people aren't just some, somebody that can give us what we want or need, but man, that they're actually treasures um, to God and how we relate to them. And so today we're kind of launching into give my best. And I think it's a topic that we all kind of identify with because we all want to give our best in a lot of different areas. And so um, we're going to unpack that for the next three weeks starting today. So as we get started, uh, let me pray for us and we'll jump in. Hey God, we just are grateful that you've given us lives to live and man, you give us a best to give. And Lord, I pray for today that man, we know that we're here because you've uh, placed us here, that nothing happens on accident, that you have given us this time together to be together, to hear from you. Uh, I pray God that you would use it to just weave some message into our hearts today, that we would be different and we love you and just pray according to the character of Jesus. Amen. Hey, so let's go ahead. We're going to jump in our Bibles. Let's open up. We're going to be in 1 Corinthians chapter 10 today. 1 Corinthians chapter 10. We're going to look at just one simple verse, verse 31. Um, You can always grab a paperback, go to the app, and you can find it. It's great for you to be able to read along with us. And uh, I'm just going to, we're going to just lock in on one verse a little different than usual, but this will be the verse that will kind of be the banner over the series. I believe you'll find it to be very applicable to your life. It can be the banner over your life as well, the banner over our church. So one of the values is we give our best. We're going to look at 1 Corinthians chapter 10, verse 31. It says this, it says, whether you eat... Everybody ate today probably, didn't you? Did you already eat today? If you didn't, you're starving or you feel like you're starving. You're hungry right now. But whether you eat or drink or whatever you do, do all for the glory of God. Whether you eat or drink, whatever you do, do all for the glory of God. So whatever you do to the glory of God, you give your best. Now we love to give our best. We live in an area that is characterized regularly as one of the best places to live. You know, Alpharetta known as the technology city of the South. But there's a lot more that goes into giving our best than just that. We have a lot of different compartments in life where we give our best. A lot of different areas that come together for us to kind of make up our entire life. Like one of the compartments that we have, one of the boxes that we have is stuff. We're like We like to have the best stuff, don't we? Like, think about the stuff that you have. We have a lot of stuff to start with. We have so much stuff that we have to have separate buildings to house our stuff that's not in our house. Our cars have their own little houses because we have so much stuff. Think about all the stuff that you have. Like, if you have a house, you have some stuff. If you want to sell your house, you, you, have to, you want to get the best what price for it. If you tried to sell it in the last three months, you got a bidding war on your house, and somebody actually paid more than you listed your house for, and you're amazed. And then you tried to buy a house and you realized you're going to have to do the same thing and you got really, really nauseous all at the same time. We love stuff. We have the best cars. Have you ever just driven around Alpharetta or Milton and just looked around like, what is going on here? I feel like I'm in Monaco at the French Riviera. Like, we have the best cars. We have the best shopping. Avalon, Collection, Phipps, like, you name it, we got it. Amazon Prime even. Like, we have the best shopping. We love stuff. I like to have the best stuff so much so that I have an annual subscription to Consumer Reports so that when I need to buy something, I can compare everything so I get the best whatever it is I'm trying to buy. Like, so my wife will say, hey, I need a vacuum cleaner. I'll be like, give me three months. I'm going to do all the research. (laughs) And she'll be like, the floor's dirty, and she's already bought one by the time I, man, we love to have the best stuff. It's just part of who we are and how God's wired us and how we want to live. Man, we love the best stuff. We give our best when it comes to stuff. What about, what about dating and marriage? Man, we love, like for those of you who are married, there's a lot of you, man, you are all in on your marriage. Like you go, go to conferences, you read books, you go to counseling just to get a tune-up. Man, you go away for the weekend. Man, you're dating all the time. Man, you love it. And if you're dating, man, you want to give your best, right? You want to give your best. Like guys will ask me all the time, listen, da- listen, Stephen, I need a wife. Like tell me, some, give me some dating tips. Dating tip number one, get a job. 
get a job, then you can start dating. But man, we give our best when it comes to dating. Man, what about church? Like some of you give your best when it comes to church. You got here early this morning. You were here about 830. You got here. We had family prayers together. Man, you've served. You've helped people. You've given your best. You give your money. You give your time. You volunteer. And you give your best to church. Some of, you, some of us do that. We give our best when it comes to church. What about friends? Like some of you are really good friends. Like, you're really good at it. You remember things that no one else remembers about people. They'll tell you one little quip about an event that's coming up, something that they're doing that week, and you remember it, and you text them about it. And it makes the rest of us really angry. But you are a really good friend. Man, you just are all in on friend. Hey, what about work? Like, most people in here, if you have a job, you give your best at work, don't you? Like, you show up on time. Man, you spend more time at work than you do anywhere else. You have a long commute. You spend 60, 70, 80 hours of work. Alpharetta, Milton, uh, Cumming, Cherokee County. We're known as one of the greatest places to work. We are, as I said, the technology center of the South, the technology city of the South. For healthcare IT, it's known as the best place to live and to work. Man, we're always ranked right up there as the best place to work. And we give our best at work. Man, some of you have some really cool skills, too, and you give your best. Like you're trained, like people pay you to come and teach them how to do what you do. Like you fly all over the country, I mean, you provide a lot of value added to your business because you have skills and you give your best when it comes to your skills. What about ENT, ear, nose, and throat? No, just kidding, it's not that. <laughs> entertainment. Like what about entertainment? How many people in the room have Netflix? Like a lot less than the first service. No, I'm kidding, because you were watching Netflix this morning. That's why you didn't come in at first service. But, <laughs> man, we have Netflix. Think about entertainment. You, man, we can go to a concert at Verizon Wireless. You can go to Chastain. Stuff happens at Phillips all the time. Like, we have, like, we have sports teams. I can't say the best sports teams, but we have sports teams that provide entertainment for us. And some of you, this is to be the first time you've ever heard this. College football, it's not religion. It's entertainment. That's what that is, even though you treat it like religion, man. We have college football. Like, we have the best when it comes to entertainment, whatever you want to do to enjoy your leisure time, and we have the best and we give our best. What about when it comes to money? It's a dollar sign. Like, what about when it comes to money? Man, we have the best. We have one of the highest paid uh, workforces in the country just based on median income, over $100,000. As everybody reads that, we get that stat regularly. Man, we, we give our best. We get our best. We want to get the most for our money, don't we? No one shows up and says, hey, can I pay more for that today because I really want to waste some money. Nobody does that. We always want to get the most for our money. Like, what about hobbies? Man, we live, man, you live probably in a swim tennis and you don't even play tennis. You know, you, you have hobbies, you have golf, and there's golf courses everywhere. Man, there's, you can go out to Lake Lanier and go fishing. Man, we have hobbies everywhere. You can do whatever it is you want. There's nothing that our area lacks when it comes to hobbies. And many of you go all in. Man, it's where you spend a lot of your time, you spend a lot of your money, man, on hobbies because we love that. Like some of you are experts in social media. Like you're all in on social media. Like right now you're kind of tweeting. I can see you. Um, but, and God knows what you're tweeting. Um, and so will I later. But you go all in on social media, Instagram, Facebook, Snapchat, Snapface, whatever the other ones are. Like social media you're all in. And you, some of you, for your companies, you've designed a social media strategy that's brought them amazing value, amazing worth. You've increased sales. You've increased the bottom line because you went all in. Man, you have given your best on social media. Man, what about eating and drinking here? Like, we got some really good restaurants. Have you noticed that? Everywhere. Like, we have restaurant after restaurant after restaurant. And if you wanted to eat at all of them, like, you, you couldn't do it because there are so many great restaurants, great food. What about drinking? Like, go to Kroger. When we're done with service, like go to Kroger and go to the drink aisle and just see how many different opportunities you have to buy drinks from Gatorade to Coke to whatever. And all the different kinds of water you can buy, there's like 92 kinds of water based on what pH level you want. Like, and then Kroger, go to, the, uh, man, go, to the, go to the wine aisle. Like It wasn't like that when I was growing up. You remember? Like It was not there. You didn't have that. It's like great, better than some wine cellars in Europe. Or just go to the aisle at Kroger. Travel. We have the best at travel. You can get to the airport, go wherever you want. You can be in the mountains in just a few hours. You can be at the beach in six. Or if you're me, 4.2. But you can be at the beach. You can go wherever you want to do. You can grab a plane. You can be in Europe. Or you can just take a quick day trip to, to Charleston or Savannah. Like, you can go anywhere you want just based on where we live. Hey, what about exercise? Like, some of you are like, I don't want to even want to talk about exercise. Like, we go all in. We, we have the best when it comes to exercise. There's a gym on every corner. 
And we have CrossFit. We have Orange Theory. We have Bikram Hot Yoga. We, we have personal trainers. I use my iWatch, right, just for exercise. And they tell me you can send a man to the moon. I don't know about that, but I do know my beats per minute when it comes to exercise. We give our best when it comes to exercise. Sports. This is where it's going to get quiet. Sports. What about sports? And we give our best when it comes to sports. You have you been to a, if you if if you are like haven't been to a sports field recently, it's like a small college campus. They got AstroTurf. Man, when I was a kid, Terrence, you remember this? When I was a kid, man, when we had baseball bats, we'd show up for practice. They would take the laundry bag with all the equipment. They would dump it all out. There were five bats in there and three helmets. And there was a small, medium, and large helmet. You just got to pick, and you just prayed to the Lord that the guy before you batting didn't have lice because you were wearing his helmet. <laughs> and now we have customized bags and special bats. Uh, you, and the, bats, the price of the bats in the bag alone are, will pay your mortgage for a month. Man, we go all in sports. C competitive cheer. It's not just baseball, it's lacrosse, football, man. We are excellent. We go all in. We spend a lot of our time, a lot of our money on kids sports, just on sports in general. What about education? What about education? Like you're living in an area where 25% of the people have a graduate degree. 25% of the people have a graduate degree. If you're asking who that is, it is not you, okay? <laughs> it is not you. 40% of people in our area have a college degree. Man, we are well-educated. We read books. We go to conferences. Man, we read stuff online. We listen to podcasts when we travel. We are well-educated. We have more information than we've ever had before. And kids, what about kids? Man, we give our best to our kids. Like, think about this. Have you ever said this to yourself? I want my kids to have more than I did. Man, I hope they have it better than I did. Now, I don't know who thought that was a good parenting strategy, but we've all said it. Like, I want them to have money. And we give a lot to our kids. I mean, they get a lot of our money. They get a lot of our time. They get the best years of our life. You know, man, we give a lot to our kids. We put them in the best schools to get them the best resume, to get them in the best college, to get them the best job so that they can provide for us in their old age. We give a lot to our kids. Man, we give a lot and we pour a lot into all these boxes. And there are more, but these are just representative of our lives right now. Man, and we give a lot of our time and a lot of our money. We get a lot of our effort, we get a lot of our thought process, a lot of our intentionality to all these. But let me ask you one question. This is a question you have to, to come to grips with today. And this is a question that if you haven't considered it, you're missing something. And the question is this. You gave all this to something up there, to a box. For what? For what? Like, why don't you do that? Why are you working 60, 70, 80 hours a week? Why why don't you spend eight thousand dollars on that vacation? For what? For me? For yourself? For, did we do it for us? So we could feel validated, so we could feel important, so we could feel like we fit in, so we could feel like we achieved something? Did you do it for your parents? Man, so because they put some pressure on you, they pay for some things, they kind of set this vision out for your life and you want them to be happy and accept you? Is it for your retirement? Is it to arrive safely on the shores of retirement? For what? If we don't get the answer to this one right, there's three things that will happen. Number one, where we'll arrive, we'll arrive at fatigue. Have you ever thought, man, I'm just tired? If you thought, man, not just physically, it's not like I need a nap tired, but just emotionally. Man, I'm just tired, I'm spent. I don't know how much left I have in the tank. You feel tired? Fatigue is a big one. If you don't know the answer to that question, if you don't answer it right, the second thing you'll happen is you'll be frustrated. You ever been frustrated? Even just in traffic. Just small things seem to set you off. There's this underlying sense of anxiety and stress under the surface. You're not sure where it's come from. Every now and then it kind of explodes out, but you try to keep it pushed down. You feel frustrated. For what? And the third thing, the third thing that will happen is all this, and it's fading. Why is it that you finish a big project at work, you get the glory, I mean, you, you, you land the deal, you work six months, you sell the product. On Friday, on Monday, they're like, hey, what's your next project? Here's your new number. Hey, fix it. 
right? We got to keep moving forward. It's fading. There's always something new. What about exercise? Do that workout on Friday. Guess what? You got to make up for all your bad eating on, week, on, on Monday, don't you? It's always something out there. It never seems to last. It never seems to give us full satisfaction. For what? What are you doing all that for? Because if you're not answering this question properly, you'll never have freedom. You'll never have it. And so we want to look at what does it look like to give my best, not to get rid of these compartments, not to get rid of these areas of our life, but what if there's a way for us to give our best that affects every single one of them? It infiltrates every box, everything that we do. How do we give our best to do that? So that I can have not fatigue, but rest. So that I can have not frustration, but joy. So that I don't always feel like everything's fading. I can have purpose. How do I live like that? So our definition for give my best as we look at this series, and based on this verse, is to giving Jesus everything in everything. That Jesus gets everything in everything. It doesn't matter what it is, Jesus gets it all. And when we begin to live like that, there's a shift that happens in our thinking. There's a shift that happens as we don't begin to live from box to box, just living these really small box lives. And Because who wants to live a life that's a small box? And we, we begin to see how everything begins to come together, how everything makes sense, and how Jesus can breathe value into every single component of our lives. So let's take a look at that verse again, 1 Corinthians 10, verse 31. Paul says, Whatever you do, whether you eat or drink. Now just think about this for a minute. Eating and drinking really small, like small things. Like why eating and drinking? Think about eating and drinking. Like you've probably already had something to drink or something to eat today. I mean, you did it without thinking about it. If you forgot to get something to eat, you're thinking about it right now. It's something we do on autopilot. It's something we do multiple times a day. It's so menial, so minuscule, so small. And so what Paul is saying is nothing is too small. Everything is included. It doesn't matter if you think it matters or not. It matters to God. Sleeping and waking and how I talk and how I deal with people relationally. Like everything is included in this. Now it's easy to include God in the big things, isn't it? Like we do that. Like if you've got a big challenge, you've got a big decision, you've got a big tragedy, you just came down with a bad report from the doctor, guess what? You are praying. Like, there's no doubt. Whether you're here today believing in God or not, that's somewhere you're going to turn because you know you don't have anywhere else to turn. Like, we get the big things, but what about the little things? Like, what's it like in the in-between times of life? You know, somebody, people will ask me this question a lot. They'll say, this: hey, I, I'm just really struggling with what to do next. I want to know what my purpose is. Like, can you help me kind of navigate to what God wants me to do? Like, what is God's will for me? Like with all my experiences, with all my education, with all my, uh, with my background, with the things that I like to do, like what, what do I do? And this is it. This is the starting point. This is the foundation for your purpose in life. Everything that we do, do all for the glory of God. Everything. Nothing is left out. There is no compartment when it comes to God. Nothing is left out. And what, one of the things that we do is that we can sometimes treat Jesus like he's another box up here. Like, I'll give the best I can to work. And if I have any left over, man, I'll, I'll give that to Jesus. He'll just be another box in my life. And what Jesus is saying is, I get it all. Man, there's nothing that's left out. Man, I am the most important. I am worthy. Man, and when you do that, everything else will come together. You know, we, we, we have certain priorities in life, don't we? Man, there are certain things that happen. If you're in a meeting, maybe you're in class, or maybe you're at work, or maybe um, you're at home, and somebody calls you, you're going to answer. There's certain people you're going to answer. Generally, those are family, or maybe not for you. Maybe that's how you screen your calls. I don't know. But generally, if a family member calls, you answer that because they're important. They have priority. So this happened to me last week. I, um, I was shocked this happened. So my, I have a daughter. You, most people don't know I have a daughter. You know I have sons. I have a daughter, and she's 24. She teaches in Tampa. And so she's talking to my wife about something, and my wife just tells her. She says, Emily, what you should do, just call your dad. She says, but if you call him right now, he's in a meeting. He may not answer. And so my, my daughter says to Debbie, she says, oh, no, he answers every time I call. Oh, come on now, right there. <laughs> Love that. I wasn't expecting that, and I probably don't answer every time she calls. But this is the level of priority that Jesus is saying. I'm not just the leftovers. I'm not just the remainder. I'm not just the residual. I am primary. He's, just, he's not just another box. So he gets our best. 
So he gets our best. This is what Jesus gets from us. Um, man, I have a, little, a story kind of out of the Old Testament I want to tell. I think it helps frame this up, that Jesus gets everything in everything, um, that he supersedes everything. There's a, a story in the Old Testament. It's kind of, it's kind of funny, but, um, but there's a story, and it's about, it's dealing with how in the Old Testament they sacrificed animals to God. So people had sinned. They'd fallen away from God. God was looking for a way so that they could bridge the, back to him that sin could be paid for, and they would sacrifice animals. And so I'm so glad we don't have to do that now, aren't you? Like, that's, that's, a, that's a winner right there. Um, I thank you, Jesus, for that, because he's the ultimate sacrifice. Can you imagine having to keep a little pin in the back of sheep and every, every now and then having to sacrifice those? Ooh, messy. Um, and I don't do well at sight of blood, so that would not go well. Um, and so Jesus has taken all that from us. We don't have to do sacrifice anymore. But in the Old Testament, they did. And so when they sacrificed, here's how it was supposed to go. God had provided them with everything they had. And this is what he required. Bring me the best. Bring me the best. Bring me the best lamb. Bring me the best dove. Bring me the best of your crops. Whatever it is, bring me the best and I'll bless you. It's how it works. This is how you'll know. This is how you'll know. This is how I'll know that I'm first in your life. This is how you'll show your worth to other people as you bring me the best. So that's what they started out doing. They would go, they would find the best sheep, and it was called an unblemished lamb. No blemish, right? No broken bones, nothing wrong, no spots, pure. They would take this lamb to sacrifice to God. But eventually they started thinking, they thought, hmm, I could get more money for that one. And I'm sure God wouldn't mind if I gave him one of the, one of the cheaper ones. And so they began, they began to pull lambs out, like maybe missing an eye. They would bring one of those. Those that were kind of leaning up against the fence post, already sick, about to kick the bucket anyway, they'd bring those. Like, no, no harm. It's still a lamb. God's not going to care. He wants me to have what's best. And they, would be, they began to bring what was called blemish lambs to God. And God says, what are you doing? After all I've given you, after all I've asked of you, you have the audacity to come to me with that, a blemished Lamb, because they were not given their best. They weren't given their best, and they thought that they knew better than God. So when it comes to giving our best, I want you to think about how much we value best. You go to the mall and buy something, you get it home and it doesn't work, or it's broken, or it's the wrong color, it has a stain on it, what are you doing with it? Taking it back. You're taking it back. Why would we give God something he would need to take back? Why would we not give him our best? He is worthy. There is no one else, there is nowhere else that you can live your lives for that is more worthy than God is. Man, he is the alpha, the omega, the beginning and the end. Everything is for him. As we talked about in our first series on Elevate the Name of Jesus, for by him everything was created. In heaven and earth, visible or invisible, whether thrones, dominions, rulers or authorities, everything was created through him and For him, he is before all things, and in him all things hold together. He's the only one that's worthy. Why would we give him second best? Why would we give him leftovers? Why would we bring to him a blemished lamb? And we should wake up every day with the understanding the majesty and the glory of the God that we serve. And that he's worth it. He demands it because he should. He's amazing. We should wake up with majesty in our minds when it comes to serving God. There were several years ago, I had a, a cool opportunity to go and to hike in Peru this, this, uh, to hike to this location called the Machu Picchu. Anybody heard of the Machu Picchu? Like, gotcha. You guys are more educated than 930. I'm just saying. Don't tell them I said that. But the Machu Picchu is some old Inca Indian ruins in the Andes Mountains. And it was we created as a religious site. And it required a pilgrimage to get there. It didn't have easy access. So I was able to go um, and hike four days in and camp and hike four days in to go and to see and to visit and experience one of the top five um, hiking places in the, in the world is what I'm told. And so for four days, man, we got after it. We were at 12 to 15 miles a day. It was up to 14,000 feet elevation. The air is really thin up there. There was one day that we, went, we walked down 6,000 steps, like stone steps, 6,000 of them literally, 6,000. We walked down, and that was just the first hour of the day. We had another 11 to go. It was hot. It was tiring. It was hard work. But on the last day, what happens is you get to go in to see the actual ruins. So you get up before dawn, and you go to this 
place called the Sun Gate. And the Sun Gate is a stone gate that looks over the valley in the Andes Mountains. And there you see the Machu Picchu. So you wake up really early before the sun comes up. And you get to the Sun Gate while it's still dark. So while you're sitting there, you're able to watch the sun rise over the valley. And you're able to see the Machu Picchu begin to light up in all its brilliant colors. And as you're standing there at the sun gate watching the sun come up, man, you're just reminded of the majesty of God, of how big he is and how small I am. You're reminded not just physically how small we are, but this is, a, this is ruins that have been there for thousands of years, that even in the, on the span of time, I'm small. But you're reminded, man, that God has included us in that to experience that. We should wake up every day with that experience. That this is the God that we serve. This is the God that we give our best to. And we do it in every area. I mean, there's a lot of areas in life, man, that we need to learn how to weave God into how he can infiltrate everything that we do. Think about a couple that I'll, I'll walk through. Man, one is just conversation. Man, God, Jesus should infiltrate our conversation every day. Like, like when you're talking to your friends and we're talking to our friends about things, other people probably shouldn't come up like their bad habits or something maybe they did the night before, what we would consider gossip or negative talking about somebody, they sh- we should be marked as different because we don't do that. We don't talk to people like that. We don't talk about people like that. Man, it should mark how we talk to people, the topics that we talk about. Man, what about, what about does, does Jesus come up in, in your home? Let's say you're, if you're someone who follows Jesus, and if you don't follow Jesus, you know, you should talk about him. It'd be incredible. He'd wreck your life. But if you don't, I understand that. But for those of us who say we do, think about, like, when's the last time he came up in your house? Like, when's the last time you just... Jesus just came up in natural part of conversation. Like, what about at work? Do people know that you follow Jesus? Like, when's the last time he came up? And if he doesn't, like, is that giving your best? Is that Jesus everything in everything? Like, our conversation. What about time? Like, does Jesus get the best of your time? Like, what about your time? I'm not talking about the most. I'm talking about the best. Obviously, man, for those of us who work, that, that's going to get the most of our time. Because that's the way our system is set up. But does Jesus get the best of our time? You know when the best of my time is? First thing in the morning. Before I've been ruined by USA Today and the news. Man, it's the, it's the best time. Man, that's the time you should give to God. Because here's the thing. We all know you give some time to God when you're driving to work. Because everybody's praying in the car. Lord, help me to get there. Help there to be no traffic. Help, man, Lord, what is this idiot doing in front of me? You should take them out. Like, you know you've prayed that. Does he get the best of your time? Very first thing in the morning. A God who is worth it, a God who's worthy, a God who wants to speak to you, a God who's given you the Bible to be able to speak life into you. Does he get the best of your time? The very first part of your time. Does he get that? Does he get that part of your time? The best of your time. When I was uh, before I went into ministry, before I became a Christian, I was an actuary, worked for an insurance company. And as I began to follow Jesus, there were some things that began to shift. And one of them was I would read my Bible in the morning. But here's what I would do at first. I would drive into work. And I would get there really early. I would try to get there before anybody else did because I wanted everybody else to know that I was there. Because it was all for the glory of Stephen. Yeah, it was all for the glory of Stephen. And I didn't have that much to do, but I thought it looked good for me to be first there. I got there first. I'd be the first one there, and I'd go in my office, and I'd begin to read my Bible when I knew that's something that I should do. And then one day I was in there reading my Bible, and another guy that got there early too because it was all for the glory of him too, he came, in, he came in and he sees me reading my Bible. He says, oh, man, I didn't mean to disturb you. And I was like, man, I'm not giving my God, God my best. My best is going to work. Like I need to give him that time at home. Man, is God getting the best? Is he getting the best of your time? Is he getting the best of your conversation? What about church? Let's get real. Like what about at church? Like is God getting the best? When it comes to just our gathering on Sunday, is God getting your best? Man, is he getting your first? Do you treat showing up to church the way you treat showing up for, to a meeting at work? Or showing up to a kid's sporting event? Are you as punctual and intentional as you are about the other areas of your life as you are at church? Like, now I get it. I mean, the weekend is downtime, Stephen. I understand. Like, TGIF, thank God it's Friday, you know. Like, we start on Wednesday, hump day, we play the camel commercial. Hump day, listen, it's coming. We are looking for the weekend. I have been working for the weekend. There's an 80s throwback song for you. I've been working for the weekend. Love the weekend. We can our guard, let our guard down and we can relax. Is that a blemish lamb? Like, is that, is that, is that our best? And we've got to learn to give our best 
when it comes to the things of God. Man, this is a place that, man, God is using to change people's lives. This is a place that's going to last. The things that you do here will last. Man, are, are you giving your best? What about with your house? You're giving your best. Like, I, I, wish, I wish we could calculate the number of square feet we all have in our homes. It's probably a lot, would you say? Maybe a billion? Probably not a billion. Like, I wonder, I wonder, are we, are we doing our best with our house? Like, if you've got space that you can use, are you having people, people over? Are you connecting and discipling relationships? Are you doing your best? Are you giving your best when it comes to your house? Hey, how about this one? You knew it was coming. How about your money? How about me with my money? Like, are we, are we doing our best? Am I giving my best? What does that even look like? You know, the Bible lays it out just like it lays out sacrifice. Hey, the way you give your best, it's pretty clear. You start with 10%. You start with 10%, and God can, he can do more with your 90% that he leaves you than you can do with 100%. And one of the way, reasons we give 10% is just to say, God, you're in charge of my life. You're in charge of my finances. Could it be you're frustrated with your finances because you've never considered this? And then after 10%, that, that's where generosity starts. So when you give your best, here's what happens. You get a raise. You get a bonus. You get an income tax refund. You're like, well, what do I do with this? Now, our go-to is like, I'm, I'm getting a new piece of gear or vacation. Like, that's kind of my go-to. But what if it began to change for us? What if to give our best, I mean, God, is there someone you want me to help? Like, is there some need that I need to meet? Is there somebody somewhere that needs something? You've just provided me with the resources to help them, God. Like, what do I need to do with this? Like, it's a shift in how we think. What about kids' sports? I feel like that's even tenser than money. At times, that one's off limits. You can't talk about kids' sports. Listen, I love kids' sports. Man, my kids played sports. But what if, what if they're stealing the foundation from our kids at times? What if, I'm not saying that we should never, ever play on Sunday like our, my, gen, my parents' generation would have said, that you would never have played on Sunday or Wednesday for that matter. And now on Mother's Day, I have to send my wife to go watch stuff because I'm preaching. Because nothing's off limits. And what if we, we quit standing idly by and we engage in the, at least it was a conversation about what is best. But, but Stephen, you don't know, my son, man, if he doesn't go, if he doesn't play on Sunday then, or Wednesday, then if he's not at practice and he won't get to play, if he doesn't get to play, man, he won't get that college scholarship. If he doesn't get that, let's say he won't get drafted. And you know he's the next Chipper Jones. <laughs> like none of us really think that, but I tell you what, this week, I just I had to repent of this. I probably enjoyed my kids' success a little too much. And so have you. I probably enjoyed those game-winning shots and those school records just a little bit too much. Fortunately, God rescued them from that, and from their egomaniac father. But man, what is it? They're not making us do that. How do we have a healthy conversation about that? If kids' sports are running your life, that's on you. It's on you, and it doesn't have to. And don't hear me say the kids shouldn't be involved. They should. And don't hear me say they shouldn't have make a difference. They should make a difference. But only if they have a good foundation. Only if they're doing it not for the glory of them or their parents. Only if they're doing it for the glory of God. And we've been given such a beautiful opportunity to bring glory to a God who doesn't need us to do that. Walk outside. Look up at the clouds, and they're screaming, look at me, I'm God. He doesn't need us. But how amazing that he chooses to use us to bring him glory. And your life will begin to come together when you begin to live everything, do everything to the glory of God. When I was in, when I was in middle school, uh, I was in biology. And uh, back then it was called junior high. Anybody remember that? That was a long time ago. Um, but I can remember my first biology class where we learned how to use a microscope. And I uh, had a teacher, Mr. Carlock, and Mr. Carlock had us go out into, uh, on the playground, and we got some dirty water that was in a, kind of in a mud hole, and we brought it in, and we began to look at it under a microscope. And you could see some things. You could see some germs moving around in there. You remember that? All that stuff that we wash our hands now with? They didn't have anti antibacterial soap back then, did they? And so we would look at that, and it's amazing. A microscope is used to take something that's really small and make it look big. A microscope takes something that's really small and makes it look really big. And some of you are microscope living right now. You're taking this box right here. It's really small, smaller than it needs to be. 
and you're making it really big, and you're giving everything you can to it without doing it for the glory of God. You're taking one of these small boxes here, and you are living a little box life because it's so small. Now, there's another kind of uh, instrument that we use to magnify. It's called a telescope. And a telescope helps us to take something that's way far out there, something that's majestic that we can never get our eyes on. It brings it up close, like the Hubble telescope. And the thing about a telescope is its power is not in the magnifying glass or in the mirrors. Its power is in its ability to focus more light into our eyes so that we can see. It's not in the expensive magnifying glass or the mirrors or any of the knobs and the dials that we turn into. Its power comes in its ability to just focus light into the telescope so that we can see. This is the kind of life that we want to live. We want to live a telescope life where we focus the light of Jesus into our lives, where it infiltrates everything that we do, every box that we have, every part of our life, big or small, everything, and we begin to live for the glory of God. Listen, it makes you look different. It makes you look different. It makes you live differently. It brings peace in the midst of conflict, and it brings hope in the middle of despair, and it brings light in the midst of darkness. It's a different way to live. It doesn't mean that any of these go away, but it means we do them differently. Like, imagine what your life would look like if you could get rid of stress and tiredness and striving and living for the glory of you like imagine what your life would look like how could that be different and imagine what happens when a group of people called a church come together and they begin to do everything for the glory of God like imagine how that could change a community imagine how it could recapture the mission of the church from being a consumer mindset what's in it for me how can I be a part of what God is up to and this is a game changer as we give everything to Jesus because he is in everything. Let's pray together. Hey God, you are worthy. Let's just say that. You are worthy. I'm grateful that you are majestic and holy and full of glory. And God, that you have reached down to us to give us a life to live that you can weave in everything that we do. God, you've given us jobs and you've given us fiancés and you've given us boyfriends and girlfriends and you've given us schools and you've given us parents and kids and you've given us entertainment and fun things to do you've given us skills to use you've given us a body to to use God for your glory and God that we would just see that that's what's been missing God that as we run the race and we're just tired and frustrated and always having to start over because there's always one more day, one more step, one more process, one more product, one more sale, one more event. God, that we would just step back and say, what's going to last? Like for what? And it's for you, God. We just lift up the name of Jesus in everything. I pray you just take our time together, the hour that we've spent together today, and just weave it into our hearts to make us see something differently today. And we just pray according to the matchless name of Jesus. Amen.